we're going to race that. So welcome to this episode of Heartbreak Garage and it really is heartbreak for this little mini. The spring has come off, it snapped, went through the tyre so it got delivered to us on a low loader and uh, yeah it's fucked. So uh, let's get to it. So the big problem we've got here is this car is outside and it's immobile and I want it inside where it's slightly warmer and on the ramp so I can work on it so I've got to make it mobile without destroying the tyre and for that I'm going to use some pliers and the death wheel right. So now we've made the spring into a load of smaller bits, we're going to precisionly wedge ourselves something in the shock absorber to hold it up so we can get it in the workshop. Put the spring off now so it's not going to dig into the tyre we put on and I'm going to use this precision piece of mechanical equipment called the block of wood and just stick it up in the strut, up in there and wedge it in so we can put the wheel on and drive it in the workshop. We have it. The mini is on the ramp. We got her out from in the yard and I'll just remove the special mechanical help. We've got all block of wood. We got rid of that. So I cut the spring out. This is what it should look like. There you go, there's the spring there, all located in. So that's what it should look like, but Due to the potholes and the stakes of the roads, it ended up snapping and it came down off the spring pan into the tyre and ruined the tyre and let, you can see there where she was smoking out and all the bits of rubber got caught on the inside of the wheel arch. So what we got left now is this, what's left of the spring, and we got all these lovely components and uh, we need plenty of the WD-40 and we're going to remove this flexi brake pipe there and we're also going to remove the uh, ABS sensor, the wheel speed sensor so there we go, we've got to remove the anti-roll bar link and then we can unbolt the shock there and get the pin out and then we've got to get it out of the clamp there for the hub and uh, we'll all be happy days but the best way to get these out and these off is with these needle nose pliers and you can just get them and flick them out and uh, it's mint because you're just applying pressure to both sides of the thing and it's great so first, after we've got to remove the brake pipes and the ABS sensor out of the way we're going to remove the anti-roll bar drop links and uh, she is a rusty girl this one in here now they've been on a long time so i'm not even going to bother trying I'm just going to get the angle grinder out ain't no much wd-40 going to get them off so now we've cut that off we can get the strut off and once the strut's out, I'll cut the other end off and then the other end is fixed to that, so it don't matter.
So we've cut the anti roll bar link off there and now we're going to get some WD-40 on the pinch bolt and all over the bottom of the shop. Dad's come with the milk because we ran out of milk so I can have a cup of coffee which is going to be nice. So we'll soak them. We'll get on this side and I've cut the anti roll bar link on this side and took the pipes out again as well because uh, I've got to be fast, I don't want to be all night. So we've got the driver's side off now and this is the passenger side and this is complete. I've already disconnected the brake pipe, ABS and I've got the brake pad wear sensor and you've got to be extremely careful not to damage these because that will ruin your day. So we've got the 18mm socket on the nut and we're going to give it the big ugga dugger, see if it's got enough. We're going to have to use the, the big ratchet. See whether this has got enough. <sighs> so we got him off. She's rusty. But with a WD-40 and a bit of patience. So now we've got to get this stud, pin, bolt, whatever you want to call it. Shouldered bolt probably. Out of the C-clamp that's part of the hub assembly that holds the strut to the hub. So we need to undo that. Now this will be tight. <sighs> Just give him a tap and see if it'll move. And what you're gonna have to do at the end, if you do it like I do it, which you've got not got much choice, is you're probably gonna have to dress the end of the bolt up and sort the threads out. So now that's sticking out, rather than hammering it with a drift, I'll get a 15mm spanner, because it's an M12 bolt, and put it behind. and spin her on out. Oh, she's fairly rusty. I'd say that's a 8 out of 10 on the rust meter. We almost didn't get it out. So now the bolt's out and I have pre-soaked this in WD-40 beforehand. I'm going to take this big lump of steel because I want to place it on the top of the hub without damaging anything. And this does two things. First of all, it's really heavy. So you got gravity on your side. And second of all, it gives you something to hit that isn't the hub or the disc. So hopefully now she'll just drop out. Bar. And what you've got to be careful of is that your drive shaft doesn't pull out the gearbox. You don't want to lose all your gearbox oil. So now that's off and we haven't broken anything, we can undo the top bolts. Where's my ratchet? Oh, it's here. So we've got some 13s on the top, when I can find them. And we'll get the hard to get to ones first. Now 
and there's just three of them up there so now we can remove the prize careful of the brake pipe which is the McPherson strut so swivels on the top to allow you to steer and gives you your suspension but we don't want that because that's rubbish so we've got an array of parts here first of all we don't need all these bits oh, they can go away we don't don't need them what we do need is right here so we've got two new stabilizer links a shock absorber two springs two top mounts and another shock but we might need to salvage parts from the other assembly so we'll see what we've got first yep as I suspected we're going to have to salvage some parts from the old units so we've got top mounts we got shiny springs and what else shock absorbers nice new shock absorbers as well so we've got to assemble all this but we're going to have to take some bits from our old units and hopefully no issues with them. Come on. Beautiful. So let's see what we have to strip out. So here we are with our old rusty old knackered unit. And uh, what we're trying to save is first of all, we want to save the top cap that covers the hole where the bearing is. We want to save this spring plate that goes on the top underneath there there and then there's a rubber item there that's an isolator between the spring and there's also a rubber isolator here on this end which we're going to save because uh, they're the bits you don't get and you can only get them off bmw or mini or whoever it is so we'll try and get this out there we go so we've saved that bit first piece now I'm gonna to have to get it in the spring compressor and undo this nut now with spring compressing if you're not totally confident don't do it so we're gonna disassemble the components on this McPherson strut but you must be careful if you want to meet your maker ahead of your allotted schedule this is the way to do it there's certain tricks here don't put your face over the spring or try not to and just be aware of what you're doing because it will kill you but first we've got to pump it up and take the weight of the spring off i think that should be just enough She's spinning, we'll have to get some big grips. So we can grip this on here and not worry about damaging it because we're not reusing it. You can't grip a new one that you're going to use like that because it'll uh, destroy the seals in it. We're now entering danger zone. So, oh, take the nut off. So there's our bearing all smooshed up and now we're at the bits we want to try and save. So there we go with a few shim plates and bits and bobs that's what we need. And there's the spring and that's the piece that's the piece we need to keep 
and if the bump stops any good we'll reuse that so we're all ready to go and here's our spring little end on the bottom fat end on the top and this is one of the parts we rescued from the other one now this is clamped down so we'll get that off Move back into the danger zone and the pressure is building So we've got our spring plate on and now we're putting our struts up with our bearing and we put the packers we rescued off the other strut. There's two packers, um, not really packers but one is for keeping the dust out and the other one is a spacer. Now we've got our nut, which we're going to put there. Right. So because it's a nylock nut, it hasn't wound all the way down, so I'm going to release it a little bit and see if it catches, and then maybe, there we go, nope, and I have to put an Allen key with the crow's foot in it. So I've got a crow's foot 18 and an Allen key to tighten it down to hold it. Don't turn the shaft, just turn the nut because it will damage the inside of the shock absorber. <clears throat> we're all done, she's tightened up and we're now safe again. Live to fight the next shock absorber by the power of time travel brought to you by Heartbreak Garage, we have two built up shock absorbers ready to go on the car. And all that's left now is to cut off what's left of the anti roll bar links and put them together. Scrap. We're at the halfway point, let the rebuild commence. Rebuild now and you've always got to have aerosol copper grease. Forget what you think you know about your copper grease in a tub, aerosol is the way. Just get it on there, get it on the top of there, nice, so, you know. And now, we can start fitting it. Ready? You gotta line the tab up on the back of the shock absorber with the hole in the hub. There we go. And then jack her up till she bottoms out. And there you go. Now we just got to get the bolts back in, but if you'll remember, I had to beat the shit out of the bolts to get them out. So the ends are probably all manky and horrible, so we're going to have to do a bit of a thread repair before we do that. 
because we haven't got any spare ones because it's eight o'clock at night. With a few minutes on the bench grinder, I've cleaned her off, tidied the threads up and done a bit of a thread chase. We're back on it with the aerosol uh, copper slip. Bang the bolt through. Look how easy that went in this time. Get the nut on. Perfect. So we're back on it, 18s again, tightening her up. And we've gone with the uh, the German torque setting of good and tight on this, considering it's a mini. Well, new mini. So uh, now that's all on there, all we need to do is put our hydraulic pipes, our cables and our anti roll bar link back on and we're finished on this side. So we'll quickly pop that on there, pop that on there, that's them two done and it's anti roll bar time. So got the anti roll bar link, gonna bang it on. The 18s or the 17s or might be 17s because uh, 17s because we're out the market. So we'll try it and see if it tightens up. There we go. One. Can't get to that one. Two, two so we swapped onto one of our snap-on flexible headed sockets, and these are like a ball socket, and they're so much better than any of the other universal joint that there and they take a i give them hell and they're brilliant done one side complete minus the wheel so yet again you lucky people have experienced the heartbreak garage time travel machine and i have done the other side so it's all there I have gone round and made sure everything's tight and torqued up and I haven't just relied on my impact tools. So we'll give it a bit of a coat with the aerosol. Copper grease is only to be used to stop things seizing up. Don't use it on drive shafts or moving components because it acts as grinding paste, just so you know. So now all that's left is to talk the wheels up and take it for a road test. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, please comment and have a wonderful evening. If it don't fit, don't force it.